we're gonna take these lime made mushrooms and go from this to this. We're making some crab cakes, crabless crab cakes today. And we're gonna start by chopping the bottom of those mushrooms off and gently pulling apart each of the heads. I had maybe two mushrooms in here and they shredded to this much in the bowl, okay? Just be gentle. It's actually gonna um, make pretty many crab cakes, so you don't really need a lot. Once you have them pulled apart, we're gonna season this bowl up with the exact same ingredients that I would if I was making regular crab cakes, which is garlic and onion. Today I use granulated onions and granulated garlic, but it certainly is interchangeable with garlic powder or onion powder. We're also gonna add to this some Chesapeake Bay. Now this is Costco's version of Old Bay seasoning. Okay, it tastes the same, but it adds a really nice seafood flavor and smell to um, anything that you're making. You can add Old Bay to chickpeas and get a tuna salad feeling also. Depends on the texture you want. We're also gonna add some parsley. I added about one tablespoon of parsley. It's really gonna depend on, again, how much you want in that flavor. We put a squirt of yellow mustard. Believe me, you won't taste it at all. That's where it probably came out to about one teaspoon. We're also gonna add um, some binders here, and I used veganese mayonnaise. This is my favorite vegan mayonnaise, uh, which you really don't taste, but um, it was about a half a cup just to help bind and hold these things together. Another flavor binder is going to be some vegan Worcestershire sauce. This is a little difficult to find, but sometimes you can find it uh, in uh, Wegmans. Uh, otherwise, I get mine online. Once I had all those things together, I just mix it up. It came together very, very quickly. But I forgot two things. I forgot breadcrumbs is the first thing. You can use either whole wheat breadcrumbs, white breadcrumbs, but I would suggest you use panko breadcrumbs because it brings it together a little better. Um, you don't taste that crispiness at all because it's not on the outside, but rather it's on the inside. And then all those liquid binders will help um, you know, solidify that. I also use an Atlantic kombu, which is a seaweed flakes. You can buy this online, or if you cannot find this online or in an Asian supermarket, you can also just use the seaweed snack things that you can get in any store and just crush them up, which is what I'm doing here. Um, even though these come as flakes, I like them to be smaller flakes. I don't, I don't want large chunks of that in my crab cakes. But let me tell you, between the Old Bay and these seaweed flakes, you get a delicious seaweed flavor and a wonderful aroma. Um, and since the mushrooms have pulled apart to that crab cake texture, I'm telling you, you can't tell the difference at all. So you're just gonna mix all these those things up and then we're gonna be ready to get started on forming our crab cakes. Sometimes when you're done mixing, you might find, hey, I need a little more liquid or, or binder or whatnot. And so I did add a little more mayo, no more than about a tablespoon and a half. But again, it's gonna depend on if you want that flavor or if you want that um, amount of mayo. I also thought I needed to add a little more of the breadcrumbs. So I just sprinkle, sprinkle, okay, nothing big. Uh, once you make these a couple of times, you'll get an idea of the texture that you want um, while you're mixing it. So look at this mix, y'all. That looks just like crab cakes, okay? It, it smells delicious, it's gonna be delicious, but I just can't wait to show you the finished product. So now that we've combined all that we wanna combine, I wanna add a little bit of salt and pepper. I had not put any of that in the recipe, partly because I used Old Bay, and Old Bay has salt, so be careful. Don't put too much of that in there or else your, um, you know, your cakes will be a little too salty. I also added a little bit of black pepper. If you want a different amount of heat or a different type of heat, maybe some cayenne would have been good in there or maybe some red pepper flakes. So let's start making our um, crabless crab cakes. I have a large serving spoon, so I am just gonna take big scoops of that and it's about the size of my palm. And when I do that for this entire batter or this mixture, I got six good sized crab cakes out of just those two pulled apart lion's mane mushrooms. The good part about these is they're not overly sticky, so they're not overly messy and get everywhere, um, but they come together so very quickly. I also like that you can see all the pieces that are inside of this. Again, I think I got about six of them. So we went from this to this pretty quickly. That's the kind of meal that you want. You want a delicious meal that you can get in a pan pretty quickly. So let's start doing that. I'm gonna get about five in this pan. I don't wanna crowd the pan because I want the heat to be able to move between all of them uh, and I want it to cook evenly. So I, I, I think I put about five in here. 
I did spray this pan with some nonstick spray. I think I have an avocado spray in here. And since I have gas, I have it on about a medium um, heat. They will cook through pretty quickly. So after about four to five minutes, I like to start checking them. And I check to see one, is it gonna come off the pan? And two, is it nice and brown on the bottom? Because there's uh, a little bit of ridges and things in here, I do kind of press them down to make sure that the heat is touching every part of the bottom of that uh, crab cake. But look at her, look, look at this, look, look, look. Oh my goodness, just looking at that makes me hungry. Um, but they crisp up so nicely on the outside. Um, and you see this one and this one weren't ready to come up, so they weren't they weren't ready. They didn't release. I left them alone for a couple seconds, and then I'll go back and flip them over. But look at that. If you want more of a crispiness on the outside, you could have put a little bit more of the panko all around the outside and deep fry. But I didn't want all that oil. I wanted a pan fry. And I think they come out perfectly every time. So let's get in here and take a look at the details. Look at the, the shredding. Look at the herbs and the seasonings. And look at the seaweed. These look wonderful. They smell wonderful. And let me tell you, they taste wonderful too. Listen, I was making a whole meal, so I figured I'd show you the rest of my dinner. But I had some baby bok choy that I had sliced down the center and was soaking in some cold water to make sure any sand or dirt may have come out of them. And I'm just going to put them in a medium-high heat pan with a little bit of oil that I sprayed on the bottom. I am charring these, okay? The bottom is going to get nice and a little soft, not too crispy, but the top is going to get more crispy because they're leaves and they'll cook quicker. I think I season them pretty simply with a little bit, but this is going to be my whole meal. I'm going to have my crab cakes right next to me. I'm searing my baby bok choy, and in the air fryer, I have some potato wedges, seasoned potato wedges. Listen, this is a wonderful meal. It came together very quickly. A lot of things I was able to prep a little bit in advance, and the crab cakes only took a few minutes, so this was a great and fast meal. You're going to see what this looks like once that charring is done. Um, the top of those leaves cook really quickly, so they kind of got crispy. But look at the little brownness in them, which is my what I would consider kind of like charring. I just wanted my stems to soften. I didn't want them as crispy, but there's still a lot of crisp in there, so the nutrients are still there. And um, once I put these with the rest of my meal, dinner was ready. Look at my crabless crab cakes, y'all. You can see the flakes. You can see the herbs. You can see everything that I put in there and it smells wonderful and it tastes wonderful. My whole meal was wonderful. So listen, if you like this recipe and this meal, click like and then click subscribe so you get some more. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.